What is going on everyone? Today I'm going to be giving a non-spoiler review for Alex Garland's Civil War. So this is a movie I was looking forward to ever since the trailers first came out because the trailers looked phenomenal. I had no idea what the movie was really going to be focused on. Obviously, you know, the whole concept of it was shown in the trailer, but I didn't know what direction it was going to go in from there, but I was definitely very curious. So I went ahead and saw it in IMAX and I definitely think this movie is worth watching, especially in IMAX. Of course, you could see it in other theaters too, but I highly recommend that IMAX experience. But let's actually break down the good and bad of the movie. So starting off with the positives, I would say this movie has some of the best sound design I've seen in a movie in a long time. Obviously, I don't think it's the best I've ever seen in terms of that, but it's up there. Mostly in terms of a lot of the military equipment used here, like certain guns, certain like helicopters and jets and explosions. All these things just sound so realistic and they also just like completely changed the level of immersion you have in the movie based on it. It was a very loud movie because of that. I mean, every gunshot hit you with a punch. If a gunshot came out of nowhere, it scared you. It was genuinely like a jump scare, but that's how it would be in real life. So it really does immerse you in that experience based on how good the sound design is. And even just the, love, the usage of music and everything like that, like everything was so perfectly placed in this film. I will say the usage of music was really interesting because they would use like happy, like lightly toned music right after a really fucked up scene, which might seem like a weird out of place thing, but there's an actual purpose to it because a lot of these characters are so desensitized to the violence going on. The whole concept of this civil war in this film is something that's been going on for a while. And you can tell at the very beginning of the movie that these characters are desensitized to it. A lot of them are. Not all of them, but some of them are. And so I think the usage of music there kind of shows that like this is something that they kind of take quite lightly at this point because it's just something that's been their lives for quite a while. The cinematography is phenomenal. Just there's some shots in this movie that will blow you away. A lot of amazing establishing shots just showcasing the actual scale of this film. There's a couple of shots in Washington, D.C. specifically, which are just mind blowing. And I do think the IMAX experience obviously will help that out a lot more. If you watch it other places, you might not get to feel all of it. But when you actually watch it in IMAX, I mean, oh, my God, there are some incredible shots and everything just looks so crystal clear and just well defined. Like there was never a point where I felt like the camera was in a place it shouldn't be. There's some action sequences later on in the film that you genuinely feel so immersed in the, the actual action and you feel like you're physically there. Like a lot of movies when there's action scenes, they'll kind of like put the camera in positions that just kind of showcase what's going on with the action. But this one really does put you there. It puts you right in the battle and I think that's important just based on what this movie is truly about. There's a ton of anxiety inducing tension. I, for one, felt a lot of anxiety watching this movie. There's a couple scenes in particular where you are just terrified for these characters. And obviously you're not 100% certain what characters are gonna survive and which characters are gonna die. You have no idea and you just feel terrified for them this whole time because they're not soldiers that's not who they are yet they're put into these major battle situations just based on what their occupation is and yes i should probably go a little more in detail with what that actually is because a lot of people are not really sure what this movie's truly about and i'm not going to spoil what the movie's about fully but i do want to at least give people some sort of idea of what to expect because i feel like a lot of people are going to this movie expecting some civil war like battle movie that's not really what it's about the movie is about war journalism specifically war photographers these characters are going into these battles to try and capture it so they can show it off to the publics because they want the public to know what's going on they don't want people to have absolutely no idea what's happening this is a real thing this is a real occupation and it's showcasing the lengths that these characters will go to just capture the perfect shot of these battles to showcase what's actually happening within this civil war. And because of that, I mean, obviously they're not soldiers. So you are a lot more terrified for them because they don't have guns. They're not going around shooting people. They are hiding from the gunfire, but they are also right there in the middle of it. When a lot of times they honestly shouldn't be, they're putting themselves in harm's way all the time, but they're doing it so they can get the story out there and they can make sure the public understands fully what is happening. The acting is phenomenal as well. There's actually a lot of amazing moments with Kirsten Dunst here, and I haven't seen her in that many films. Obviously she's probably most known for the Spider-Man films at this point, but I think this is honestly one of her best performances because of just how it changes throughout the film. And she's very hardened. Like you can tell this is a hardened character. She's been through a lot. She's dealt with a lot. And she's at this point now where all this stuff, like she's just very desensitized to it. 
But she has some moments of vulnerability there, specifically with this character, Jesse, that comes into the story. And she almost sees herself in Jesse. And so whenever they're in battle situations, she's honestly more worried for Jesse than she is for herself because she sees herself, her younger self, in Jesse. And I think they do a lot of good character work there. There's another character there named Joel. He's not as interesting, I would say, personally, but he still has some good moments, too. And overall, I think they do good focus on these characters, which is important because, I mean, if you don't care about them, then, you know, you're not going to feel as much anxiety watching these scenes if you don't care whether or not they're going to live or die. Now, getting into the actual Civil War conflict itself, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because, to be completely honest, it's just not what the movie's about. Like I said, the movie doesn't really go in depth with why the Civil War is actually happening. Now, although the movie's not very clear as to what caused the Civil War, you could see some subtext and kind of understand certain aspects of it and I do believe a big part of it has to do with this president who just started to become very authoritarian like in terms of using airstrikes on innocent civilians and just weaponizing the police there's a lot of different aspects of that I believe they also uh, the president disbanded the FBI as well there's a couple different things that you can kind of understand like okay so that must be what the western forces are then fighting against right they're fighting against this president and but then you also see that like most of the country is loyal to it again they don't really specify like okay why are those states loyal to it and then you see it's a florida alliance like okay what is their alliance and how is it similar to you know the western forces or is it very different i think the whole reason they didn't go in depth with what the civil war actually was is because that's kind of the whole point of the film it's that a lot of these characters feel like they don't even know what side they're fighting for they don't even know what they're fighting for and you have a couple conversations with characters here where they don't really know what they're doing. They're just trying to kill other people and the people are trying to kill them. And it's as, it's as simple as that. And it's like they've been fighting for so long that they've almost lost sense of what they're fighting for. And I think that is interesting. Like, I think that's kind of, again, the purpose why they didn't go in depth with what the Civil War is. It's just not the point of the movie. And pretty much all sides of this war, and there's multiple sides, like I said, it's not just, you know, two different sides. There's a couple different alliances going on. They're all doing terrible things at the end of the day. And it's hard to defend really any of what's going on here, what any of the characters are doing. The only characters you're really like rooting for is obviously these war journalists. You're really only rooting for them, but even the side that they're on at that point, you're not entirely okay with a lot of the stuff they're doing because a lot of stuff they're doing is kind of fucked up. But now I want to jump into the negatives because honestly, what I'm talking about there, I do think could apply to some negatives I had about the movie. As much as I understand it's not the point of the film to go in depth with what the Civil War is in this movie, what it was caused, what caused it. But I kind of felt like we could have used it. Like, I, I don't think we needed it, like I said, but I do think it would have helped. I do think it would have helped certain aspects of it and almost would allow you to just add some more world building to the universe that these characters are in. But honestly, you barely get any of that. They even released this map of what, you know, the United States looks like in this movie, what it's supposed to look like. And a lot of what's going on in this map, they don't even cover in the movie. Like, you have no idea what a lot of these alliances even are. Like, they don't really cover them. Like, there's the New People's Army in the, in the, in the North Northwest. Like, I don't recall ever hearing that even in the movie. Maybe it was, but it was a very just slim. Did they just mention it right out of nowhere? And didn't, they didn't really cover what they actually believe in, what their motivations are. The Florida Alliance as well, like, they might, they might say it once or twice, but it's not really an integral part of the movie. And the last negative I can say is I mentioned before how these characters, these war photographers, they obviously do a lot of things to try to get the perfect shot. They really want to cover this war as much as they can. But there's a couple points in the movie where I felt like they just did a little, they did a little too much. Like, it was like, you really don't have to do all that. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes there would be scenes where they would literally jump in front of like battle situations. They'd be right out in the open. And I'm like, okay, I get you trying to get this shot, but don't you want to live too? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's some times where it's like, all right, you, you don't have to go out in the middle of a battle like that. Like, stay behind cover, please. And most of the time it's fine. I don't think it's a problem, but it just starts to get a little annoying at a certain point because you're like, all right, like, I get it. You want you want to get these shots. Your life's important too, though. So, so, so please, like, if you get killed, it's not even going to matter at the end of the day. Like, so you have to be safe while trying to do it. And they're, most of the time they are. A lot of times they're not. And I feel like it almost got annoying at some points. But 
that's really all I have to say in terms of negatives. I think this movie was a very well-made film all around. I've been seeing a lot of controversy for it. A lot of people feel like it didn't take a hard enough stance on politics. And I don't really agree with that. I feel like it kind of did, just not in the most overt way possible. The Civil War here, it wasn't like liberals versus conservatives. That's not what the movie is. I think, I think some people assumed that's what it was going to be, which is why they were so confused about the Texas-California lines, because obviously politically those are two very different states. But the movie isn't about, it's not really like divided like that. That's not really how it is. You do have some representations of certain people on the political spectrum in this movie, but it's not, it's not, that's not what the division comes from though. And, and I, again, they don't really go in depth with it. So it's hard to tell exactly where it comes from, but they really don't go that far. Like for example, the president in this movie, you don't even know what political party he's on. You don't know if he's a Republican or Democrat. You have no idea. And I don't really think they had to go in depth with that. I don't think there was a necessity for that. But at the end of the day, I do see that's a lot of the controversy right now with this movie. A lot of people are saying they didn't like it because of that. But I don't I don't think that means the movie's not saying anything. It is saying a lot. And even if the movie wasn't saying anything, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad thing either. At the end of the day, it's a movie. You know, you can take your own opinions from it. You can take your own ideas of what it could mean or what it couldn't mean. But it doesn't mean there has to be some overt message that, you know, you have to believe in. Like, that, I, th I don't think that's how all movies should work. And I think this movie does have some messages that it's covering. It's just... It's just a lot of it's a little more subtle and um, it's not necessarily a, a fully political, you know, one sided stance, which I'm completely fine with the movie not being that way. Overall, I'm going to give the movie an 8.8 out of 10. I don't think it's perfect. I do think there are some things holding it back, but I do think it delivered a solid cinema experience. And there's a lot of interesting themes covered in this, a lot of interesting subtext that I think works on a lot of levels. So definitely recommend seeing this movie in theaters, definitely in IMAX. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Peace out.